Uh, I'm called Phil Griffin, and um, essentially I've spent the last month um, watching 50 odd years of television uh, in preparation for uh, uh, an exhibition uh, that I'm curating that will open on uh, the 4th of November, which is the day that the analog signal switches off at Winter Hill. And the Ghosts of Winter Hill is an attempt, really, to look at the impact that television production in and about Manchester has had on the city and the attitude that developed, the various attitudes that developed and evolved in Manchester across that period of time. Uh, I've been doing that for the last several months, which is why I'm not about to do any of it today, because really my bigger interest and one that I'm going to be much, much more relaxed getting back to is the notion of, um, of Manchester as a city, the built environment, all those phrases, a lot of which I don't like, um, but nevertheless, uh, you know the currency of now. That was Manchester as at uh, about quarter past four yesterday afternoon. Uh, and in fact, Manchester is that city that you can see in the distance. The city that's far closer to us is another city entirely. It's the city of Salford. Um, everything that you can see there is Manchester. None of it is Salford. There's an intervening city wall, which is a railway viaduct. And inside that is a river, the River Irwell, which becomes the Manchester Ship Canal and ends up in the Mersey Estuary. Everything that you can see, broadly speaking, to the left of Granada Television didn't exist 12 years ago. Most of what you can see to the right of Granada Television is a bit older than that. Some of it not quite so. This is the Hilton Beetham Tower, a dreadful building called City, whatever it is, City, City Wedge or something or other. Um, we might want to go, we might want to start coming into Manchester from Salford, uh, which we can do, reduce the space a little bit. That canal is actually relatively new, the Manchester Berry and Bolton Canal. It's been refurbished and brought back to existence. You might have noticed, by the way, as we made that journey towards Manchester just now, we crossed an awful lot of empty space. That's largely because the Twin Cities, Salford and Manchester, are post-industrial cities. That means they've got lots of huge holes in them. And those holes are problematic because one of the things you might want to do in order to make a city maintain is keep that city built up. And one of the things that you might therefore want to do is spread things out a little bit. If anybody ever argues to you that the reason why you build upwards is because there's a shortage of land, well, they're simply talking rot. The one thing we have in excess in post-industrial cities is land. The reason why people do things like that, which I, by the way, quite like, is because that optimizes the investment and makes that developer an awful lot more money because he's got up 46 floors instead of six floors. Quite an important move in cities, that. One of the things that you also notice about cities is now and again, and across generations, they have quite elegant buildings. This is a building from 1962 by an architectural practice called Shearer and Hicks. That's sitting on the Oxford Road, just opposite the original Manchester University building. This is the Maths Tower. And when the two universities, UMIST and Manchester University combined, Victoria University and UMIST combined to make the University of Manchester 2004, the first thing that the Vice President and Chancellor of the new university did was to take a look at this building with all of its detail. Quite a beautiful little triangular stairwell, that, isn't it? Because it's a mathematics building, do you see? Quite a beautiful little Bond-like mezzanine library with a quite beautiful little circular staircase. So the thing to do is just pull it down. What a good idea for a university to do. That's really sustainable, isn't it? Just hack it down. Whereas, if you move out of the university a little bit, I took that picture on the way back from the pub one night, which is why it's, why it's blurry. But if you move out of the university along the same road, you come to, to this. This is, this is a cinema. <laughs> this is 
This is a cinema where one day I remember I watched continuously three screenings of Walt Disney's Jungle Book, which is great. And it stuck with me for a long, long time. The only problem is when I checked out on Google what year that would have been, I realized I was 17 at the time, which is, which is really slightly alarming. You can see this, this fine, it, it, this is rather sort of pastiched up now, but rather a fine 1930s building, Art Deco, prettily detailed, recently restored by Jehovah's Witnesses. A little bit of a lectern there, a little bit of a lecture, a little bit of a baptism pool where the organ used to be. But what essentially the Jehovah's Witnesses do, and it's entirely up to them, but what they've done as far as I'm concerned is they've conserved, restored, and recycled a really rather pretty building. This is an equally pretty building. This is out in Beswick. You can see it from town. Architect J.S. Crowther. That's an enormous church called St. Benedict's. And when it, what it has with it now is a climbing wall, the tallest indoor climbing wall in the UK. What a great use for a church, nearer my God to thee. This church is St. Peter's, and this is in Ancoats. And this very nearly burnt down 10 years ago because there was an awful lot of arson around the place at the time. Makes quite a good dining room. This makes quite a good dining room too. This is... This is the interior of the Gorton Monastery, which thankfully was saved. But before it was saved, after it had been junked, uh, I, I staged a production of, um, of Macbeth in there for schools, television. And actually, at the far end of the table is Greta Scacchi, who was my Lady Macbeth, and Sean Pertwee, who was Macbeth. There he is. He does something else now. I can't remember what. That's Michael Maloney in the chair as well, Ban Banquo's ghost. Now. The point about that is, one of the great problems we have in our future is what to do with all those churches and pubs that people don't want, don't go to, don't fund, and just leave idle. What do we do with those? Because actually, to leave those churches and those pubs, which were value added when they were first built and first developed, to leave those simply to moulder and rot is an utter, utter waste of resource. That pub actually sits within 100 metres of something which is a greater indicator of the sustainability or potential sustainability of the Northwest, and that is the River Mersey in which, just in front of that pub, there's actually a salmon ladder on the basis of the fact that salmon may very well be encouraged to return to the Mersey. In the meantime, they won't be able to go there for a drink. Um, you might also find that if you have old and festering bits of city, um, people, because they get so frustrated, amongst other reasons and amongst other motivations, occasionally do nice things with them. Uh, Banksy gets on a train, comes up to Liverpool. This is in the rope walks, and I really like that cat. This, however, is indicative of something that's really, really dangerous. That's a very, very ornate theatre. It is no more. It's a car park. Not only that, it's an empty car park, and that theatre is in the midtown in Detroit. Now, I'm quite an old person, but when I was born, Detroit was the sixth most prosperous city in the world. Today, it is absolutely on its deathbed. Not only is that what they do with theatres, but that's as many cars as they get to park in them. Detroit, in my lifetime, has gone from being the sixth most prosperous city to one that is very nearly dead. You have to be careful with cities. If you lose not only industry, but population, then cities die. And one of the things that encourages them to die, and I'm going to skip on because I've only got five minutes longer, and I can't half gas about these things. Um, you've got to be careful with cities. You've got to be tidy with them. You've got to be stimulating with them. You've got to make them interesting and attractive. That is about as uninteresting and as unappealing and as unattractive as any street corner anywhere can be. That's on Deansgate in Manchester, and it's an utter shambles. 
It's got three bits of old technology sitting there. That should have been cleared away a long time ago. The new technology, by the way, is the closest to the camera, and that's these wretched A boards that appear absolutely everywhere. So there's no care that is actually being taken about certain aspects of cities that we really ought to be more careful about. Don't for one minute think that I'm against Manchester. To the contrary, I'm not. There's a church back there, rather a nice Italianate church called the Hidden Gem. I actually got married there once, but the point I would like to make is when you have... <laughs> Steady on. Um, when you have a street that is clearly not dependent on traffic, and when it's going between one street called Deansgate and another called Albert Square, it's as well not to use it merely to store the dustbins from a rather dodgy restaurant, in my view. That's a building by Will Allsop. I like it rather. That's New Islington. It's not going to be built now. There's the other. I need to get to the end of this, chaps, because I've got something really powerful to say. That, by the way, is rather a good building. I hope you've all been to visit it. Civil Justice Centre. You have to beat up your wife or cheat on your partner to get in there. <laughs> now then, this becomes interesting, and this is nearly the point. That's, uh, that's called the Abito Building, and what it's sitting on the front of is, uh, is, is, is Dock 6 at, uh, at Salford Quays. Some of you who have an interest in the BBC may recognise the fact that you're about to be a neighbour of it. Now, this is, this is the building you're all about to occupy. I think you get the keys in a couple of weeks' time, and I think you move in and in, make it operational in, uh, in 2011. So that's the BBC's building at Salford Quays, and, um, and I wish you all well in it, but I think one of the things that needs to be considered and needs to be considered profoundly is what happens to this pretty pretty attractive old studio that the, uh, the, the BBC Philharmonic has occupied for a long time. What happens to this stretch of, uh, of Oxford Street, uh, Oxford Road as it is here? What happens to the infrastructure of paper shops, news agents, printers, graphic designers, pubs, God help us all, that actually have been sustained by the BBC's presence for a long time? Well, actually, presumably, all of them move down to Salford Quays because that's where you're going. I have to say, that there is something that I wish simply to emphasize, and that is that the least sustainable thing that you can possibly do at this moment is build. Do not build. Bodge. Make do and mend. It's a lot more sustainable and it's a lot more fun. Thank you.